the fourth, the fourth slide. Okay. So, as I was saying that habits, habit one says you are the creator, you are in charge. Then habit two says is the first or mental creation. It's based on imagination. Then habit three says that, um, habit three is talking about the second creation. You know, last, last week, Dr. Tunisia spoke about um, two, all things being create, create, created twice. First in the mind, and then materializing it, um, materializing our vision into the, the physical. So habit three is simply talking about the steps and the actions required to make your vision a reality. So that is what we'll be discussing in, in today's habit. So in this, in this slide, you know, a lot of things, a lot of, um, a lot of things as individuals we engage in, you understand that, that we feel are more important to us. So putting first things first is, 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 is talking about the steps, the actions required into making our vision a, a reality, you understand? So we can achieve this by asking ourselves some very important questions, which are what, what, what are the most important things that, that, are, that, that are in our lives? Some of us, it may be our, our spouse, which is what I displayed here, or some making more money, some could be um, having good health, some could be family, some could be even, even our phone, you understand? But putting first things first, even though some of these things personally we feel like they are important to us, but in, in reality, or, or if you check their ways, some of them are not really useful to us. So we need to really focus on things that really matters instead of um, tri trivialities. So I'm moving to the next one, sir. So this is a description of an individual that did not put first things first. And I'll just quickly describe this um, image here so that we'll better understand it. This is someone that's um, falling into the habit of not, not too good habit anyway, because from the beginning, he wakes up very late in the morning and then he eats a poor meal and then he, he rushes to traffic and then rushes to work and all that. So from the stress of coming to work early, he's been pulled about doing different things, pulled to a different direction and all that. And then he's heading back home with the stress, tired, and then he now rushes to eat maybe a fast food or, or, or whatever his hands can, can lay on. And then he goes back, watch movie or presses his phone or do something that sleeps late in the night. And then the circle continues. Like this is just a description of someone that will not put first things first. Let's go to the next slide, sir. So in habit three, we'll be dealing with many of the questions addressed in the field of life and time management. And if you remember, I said this habit is a, a build up of habit one and habit two. You know, usually you may think that one of the best way to, I'm moving to the next slide now, sir. One of the best way to manage our time, I'm sure if I want to ask all of us now, we would mention um, having a to-do list, having a daily planner and um, putting some programs or plans in our calendar list and all that. So this book or this, this habit is trying to make us understand that all these methods are good, but they are not um, You could wake up in the morning and then plan your day and then just plan. So um, the, the author was able to describe a more effective and efficient way for us to manage our time effectively such that we would become more successful and more better people. So he designed, um, this, he called it four quadrants. That is, I'm moving to the next one. He designed four quadrants. He called it the time management matrix. That is what he designed. And then he, in, in this matrix, he spoke about 
the, the various activities and how we can categorize all of them into this matrix here. So in the first quadrant, he categorized it and he named it as the urgent and important quadrant. In this urgent and important quadrant, any activities that you know that is a crisis or pressing problem or deadline driven project, you can just categorize them under this um, under this 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 quadrant under this part. Then the second quadrant, this is the not urgent quadrant. In this in this quadrant, you can find um, prevention, PC personal activities, relationship building, family exercising, different activities. These activities are often neglected as activities. You understand, but the the this is where we would really dwell on in this um, habit tree. So, because he he, he made us he made, he made us understand that this is where success and balance are found. Then the third quadrant, the third quadrant is the not important quadrant. Often interruptions, some calls, some mails, reports, meeting, pressing matters, popular activities. So this is these are some of the activities that we can find in this quadrant. And then the last quadrant, which is also the not the not important quadrant and not urgent. It's not important and it's not urgent. In this quadrant, you can find busy work, fever, some emails, some phone calls, time wasters, pleasant activities. So we'll just check ourselves and then see um, the various activities we engage in, you understand, and see how we can categorize them into this um, quadrant. So I'm moving to the next page. So what it takes to say no. To say yes to important quadrant two. You know, I said we'll be dwelling more on the quadrant two because that is the, um, the, the, the most important thing that we can, we should really dwell on because that is where success and balance are found for us to really be effective and successful. So to say yes to important quadrant two priorities, you have to learn to say no to other activities, sometimes apparently urgent things. Understand? So you can't ignore the urgent and important activities in quadrant one because some of you may say, "What about quadrant one that is urgent and urgent?" Well, well, it will shrink in size. You understand? As you spend more time with prevention and preparation in quadrant two, that you are always saying no to something if it is it is it isn't to the apparent urgent things in your life. It is probably to the more fundamental, highly important things. Even when the urgent is good, the good can keep you from your best, keep you from your unique contribution if you let it in. So um, I don't mean to imply that you shouldn't be involved in significant um, projects or activities. Understand? But these things are, are important. But you have to decide what your highest priorities are and have the courage you know, pleasantly smiling to say no, you know, to other things. And the way you, you do that, this is by having a, a bigger yes burning inside. So, and as this point says, you say the enemy to best is often the good. So I'm moving to the next one. Now we say yes or no to things daily. No, sir. Go back. Uh -huh. Go back, sir. Okay, yes. We say yes to no to know to things daily, many, usually many times a day. A center of correct principle and the focus on our personal mission empowers us with the wisdom to make those judgments effectively. So the essence of effective time and um, life management is to organize and execute around balanced priorities. So you may, you may want, I'm, I'm, you may want to ask yourself these personal questions. If, if you were to fault yourself in maybe one or three areas, which could it be? Is it the inability to prioritize or your inability to desire to organize around those priorities or your lack of discipline to execute around them? Understand? So most people may say that their main fault is lack of discipline. But on a deeper thought, that is not the case. The, the basic problem is that their priorities may have not become deeply planted 
in their heart and mind. And they haven't really, this is because maybe they've had, they haven't really internalized the habit too. You understand? So there are many people who recognize the value of this quadrant two that uh, was described in this book, the quadrant two activities in their lives. So whether they identify them as such or not, and they attempt to give priority to those activities and integrate them into their lives through self-discipline, but, but without a principal center and a personal mission statement, they don't have the necessary foundation to sustain those efforts. And they are working on the leaves and the attitudes and behaviors of discipline without even thinking to examine the, the roots and the basic um, um, paradigm from which their natural attitudes and behavior flow. So I'm going to the, the last point under here now. It's almost impossible to say no to the priorities of quadrant three or to the pleasure escape to quadrant four. And if you don't, so the next one, the next slide. If you don't ha have the bigger yes burning inside, only when you have the self-awareness to examine your program and imagination and conscience to create a new, unique, principle-centered program to which you can say yes, only then will you have sufficient independent willpower to say no with a genuine smile to the important, to the unimportant. So quadrant two tools, these are some of the tools that can really you know, help you to, to manage your time and your life effectively. So the, the basic objective of quadrant two management is to manage our lives effectively from a center of, of sound principles, you know, for a knowledge of our personal mission with a focus on the important as well as the urgent and within the framework of maintaining a balance between increasing our, our production and increasing our production capability. So the first quadrant, quadrant two tool, or the first tool for the quadrant, uh, quadrant two group is quadrant coherence. So coherence here suggests that there's harmony, unity, and integrity between your vision, your mission, your roles and goals, and let's your priorities and even your plans. And in your planner, there, there should be a place for your personal mission statement so that you can constantly refer to it. And there's also need to be a place for your roles and for both short and long-term goals. So the next tool is balance. Many people seem to think that success in, in, in one area can, can compensate for failure in other areas of life. But can it really? Because perhaps it's, it can for a limited time in some areas, but can success in, let's say your profession, compensate for, for, for your bad habits or for for a, a ruined health or for a broken marriage or for, just name it, can it compensate? So true effectiveness requires balance and your tool, and this tool needs to help you create and maintain it. So the next tool is quadrant two focus. You need a tool that encourages you, motivates you, and actually helps you spend the time you need in quadrant two, so that you are dealing with prevention rather than prioritizing crisis. And the best way to do this is to organize your life on a weekly basis. You can still adapt and prioritize on a daily basis, but fundamental push is organizing this weekly. So organizing on a weekly basis provides much greater balance and context than daily planning, because there seems to be implementation of the week as a single complete unit of time, business, education, and many other facets of, the, of society operating within the framework of the week. So most people think in terms of week, but most, most generation or third generations planning to focus on daily planning, why they may help you prioritize your activities, they basically only help you organize crisis and busy work. So the key is not to prioritize what is on your schedule, but to, to schedule your priorities. And this can be best done in the context of the week. So the, the fourth tool, which is the people dimension, this is a tool that helps you deal with people 
can not just your schedule, but why you, you can think in terms of efficiency in dealing with time. A principal center person thinks in terms of, of effectiveness in dealing with people. And there are times that when principal center productive to living requires the subordination of, of schedules to people. So these two needs to reflect that value to facilitate implementation rather than create duty when schedule is not followed. And this will remind me of an incident that happened last week, Friday. I received a call from doctor while we were in the morning. Doctor called that I should I should get something done for him by, by giving accountant a document to sign. At that same instant, Bola from um, from from um, Epe called that she was having issues with a uh, retail man, and I needed to work on it. That is that. So I I said, okay, I'll get back to her. That same instant, too, Doctor Nancy too called that a customer was trying to order and she was on site and she was looking for a product, but she could not find it. You understand? And I need, and I should put it on the site for the customer to order. So I, I told her that I was doctor. So the pressure then was just on me to attend to everybody at that instant. So I now remembered a passage that I read in this, um, in this book and how I could delegate and then share some of these stats around. So I quickly remember that Blessing 2 can do the same thing that Ekpe was calling me for. So I quickly beckoned on her and I asked she should assist me to connect to Ekpe system so that she would resolve that. And she, she agreed. Then I called on Madam Ijoma. She was free at that time. I told her to help me um, print out the document that I wanted to sign on and give it to Blessing so that she would sign. And then I'll, I'll scan and send to the doctor. Then I quickly went upstairs and started working on the, and within 15 to 20 minutes, I was, I was able to do everything with the help of all these people. So, so I was able to manage that. If I had left it to me alone doing it, I would have, I, I mean, I may end up not even completing one or, or, or more times within that short period of time. So the next point or two is flexibility. So your planning tool should be very, should be your servant and never your master. So since it has to work for you, it should be tailored to your style, your needs and your particular ways. Then the last one is portability. Your time management skill should be portable so that you can carry it with you most of the time. You may want to review your personal mission statement while you're riding in the car or while you are, you are, you are out relaxing and all that. Or you may want to even measure the value of, your, of a new opportunity against something you already have planned. So if you organize, if, if your organizer is portable, you, 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 you will keep it with you so that important data is always within Reach. So next slide, sir. Quadrant two organizing involves four key activities, which is number one, identifying roles. The first task is to write down your key, your key roles. And then if you haven't really given serious thought to the roles in your life, you can write down what immediately comes to your mind and you have a role as an individual. So you may want to list one or more roles as, as let's say a family member or, or, or even the staff of an organization and all that. So you don't need to worry about defining the roles in a way that you will live with for the rest of your life. Just consider the week and write down the areas you see yourself spending time in during the next seven days. So the next, the next, um, the next activity, the next key activity is selecting goals. And this step is, it, it, it's think of two or three important results you feel you should accomplish in each role during the next seven days. I'm just trying to explain how we can really organize our, 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 our plan on a weekly basis. So you can just think of two or three um, important results you feel you should accomplish in each row during the next seven days. And this will be recorded as goals. At least some of these goals should reflect quadrant two activities. And ideally these short-term goals will be tied to the longer-term goals you have identified in conjunction with your personal mission statement. But when 
But even if you haven't written your mission statement, you can get a feeling, a sense of what is important as you consider each of your roles and two or three goals for each role. So the third one is scheduling. Now, you look at the week ahead with your goals in mind, schedule a time to achieve them. For example, if your goal is to produce um, the first draft of your personal mission statement, you may want to set aside a two hour block of time, let's say on the very less, um, less stressful or, or less on the Sunday to work on it. Because Sunday for some people, it's a special day for them or just any day that you know is not really stressful for you, just pick a day in a week and plan more personally or uplifting activities, including weekly organizing. And it's a good time that you, for you to draw back, to see inspirations, to look at your life in the context of principles and values. So if you set a goal to become physically fit during uh, through, through exercise, for example, we want to set aside an hour, three or four days during the week, or possibly every day during the week to accomplish that goal. So there are some goals that you may only be able to accomplish during business hours, or some that you can only do on Saturdays. When, for those of us who have, um, for, for some of us who have family or, or, or children, understand. So you, you can begin to see some of the advantages of organizing the week instead of doing it daily. Get so having identified the roles and set goals, you can translate each goal to a specific day of the week, either as priority item or even better as a specific appointment. And you can also check your annual or monthly calendar for any appointment you may have previously made and evaluate their importance in the context of your goals. And then the last one is daily adapting. Daily adapting with product, two weekly organizing and daily planning because more, more, more a function of daily adapting or prioritizing activities and responding to unanticipated events relationship and experiences in a more meaningful way. Now, taking a few minutes each morning to review your schedule can put you in touch with the value-based decisions you made as you organize the week, as well as unanticipated factors that may have come up as you overview the day. You can see that your roles and your goals provide a natural prioritization that goes out of your intense sense of balance. And it is a softer, more right brain and prioritization that ultimately comes out of your sense of personal mission. So, so the next slide. So this this is this image is an image of someone that is suffering from a terminal um, illness that has maybe three or one week um, duration before he can be passed on. And you can take only the grace of God for him to, to be there. So at this point now, eh, even if this man is the richest man in the world, there's, there's nothing that is more important to him than, let's say, his health, where he's lying down now, for him to just survive. I picked a quote from the book which says, things which matter most must never be at the mercy of things which matter less. So let's focus on what's important to you and make it your priority and then commit yourself to it. So the next slide. So this is the post activity reaction. So we'll just share our reaction, but I will, maybe I'll share mine then. Doctor will take over and we'll start sharing ours. So the first question is, what is that one thing you could do that you aren't doing now that if you did on a regular basis will make a tremendous positive difference in your personal life. You know, that um, diary that we're given during our retreat, that doctor said you can itemize our plans for the day and then at the close of work, we would, we would assess ourselves, we should use red pen and all that. So I started it for, for two weeks and I was assessing my, myself. At the end of the day, I'll, I'll, I'll mark myself and I discovered that let's out of 10, 10 activities, I will see myself getting like three over 10, two over 10, or even four over. I've not gotten half before. And I keep on asking myself, is it that I did not 
focus enough to really achieve what I set to, to get in this book. Until when I began to study this book and I now understood better how well we can really organize ourselves and plan on activities that are in quadrant two. And I believe if I should continue with the plan, the way I've learned in this book, it really helped me tremendously. And then on the second question, what is that one thing in your business or professional life that will bring similar results? So as so the same thing too is applicable in the, in the position that I'm currently holding in Pharma Labs. It's not actually a small position, but then every time I think about that name, I, I just imagine how a CTO in, let's say, Mark um, Zuckerberg's company or all these top companies behave or how they, they act. So those things keep me always wanting to research more and then I, 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 I try my best to devote, to dedicate at least one hour personal to just tell me more about my profession. And, and I believe with this um, attitude, if I keep up with it, it will really help me in the long run. Thank you. That's, that's all for now, sir. All right, uh, Uncle Isaac. Amazing yes, thoughts. Well done. Amazing, Thank amazing talk. And uh, I, I, I think you would do well as a person. Thank uh, you, sir. Given time, I think you would do amazing. Thank you, sir. You know, while you were talking, one of the key things that was on my mind is, are we hearing what he's saying? While he was talking, when he started, I said, I said, type something on the, on the meeting chat. What was it? Can anyone remember? Or read? The most difficult part of no, learning not you, is- not you, not you, not you, another person. The most difficult part of learning is becoming. What, what do you understand by that? Once you're learning, you know, it's easy to learn, but to, to, to actually practicalize what you've learned is where it's difficult. So it takes discipline and it takes a lot. You are, you are close, but you are not, you didn't hit the nail on the head. Who wants to make another attempt? Who wants to make another attempt? Let someone talk, let someone talk quickly. You know, we have, uh, there's a lot of, the, the, I, I think this is also an important part of this book. Every, every of these lessons are important. Uh, and you know, why, I think Isaac would do well, and I say that again. While he was talking and uh, he was giving a personal story, you know, he said he remembered something about in this book. And that helped him resolve the tax. That thing he has said eh, is what good if you learn it. You know, that's why I laugh at people who make reading secondary. If I don't argue with you, eh, it's because I think you are just fooling yourself. And it's not me that will explain to you that you're a fool. <laughs> it's not me. It's constantly that make me just glide over people that don't read. Just, you, you, let them talk. You think you're making sense. Go among people who are making billions or who have achieved more, way more than you are and talk and see if they will call you back. You cannot argue against books. Like you cannot argue against it. 
some will say I learned in other ways. Okay, no problem. See how far it has gotten you. He said, you know, you know, all of us, sometimes when I get to the retail, uh, wholesale, you know, one of the key things that I know they consistently mention about Isaac is that he cannot withstand so much pressure and then sometimes he just overreact during pressure. And guess what happened? And I, I just hope we're listening. The same pressure came, but he had already put in his mind a file on how to resolve it. So when the pressure came, he remembered the, uh, the file from Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He deployed that file and he overcame it. The challenges you are facing now is, is just directly proportional to how stupid you've become, right? And the only way out of that madness is growth through learning. You know, I, I, I listened to a voice note. I saw the way somebody spoke to another person. And I just shook my head. I said, the only way out of this eh, is growth. Because at that moment, you make perfect sense. In fact, if somebody tells you you are wrong, you will argue and argue and let the person know why in that case, the other person is wrong. <laughs> you know, I usually state this, my younger sister, I gave her a mask, two minus five, and she started laughing at me, right? And then I wonder why she was laughing and asked her. She said, Uncle John, it's not possible. Hmm. She was laughing at me, thinking that I got mask upside down. But she didn't know that she was laughing at a level of understanding. So when she said that, I just smiled and I changed it five minus two. Who is stupid? It's not me. I know more. But I just realized that I gave up too much that our mind can bite. I see some of the things we do and I just laugh it out. And that's why sometimes when I said the only way out is growth, like I mean what I say. Uncle Isaac, you, if you continue like this, eh? if you continue like this, eh? I will pay money, pay money, pay money to allow you stay. Now, eh, it looks like it's the business doing you a favor, right? Just keep up this thing that you're doing, this growth that you're doing, right? Just keep it up. Hmm? One year after, Pamela will say, ah, this eh, Isaac, if he goes now, there will be a lot of problem, right? Then we will now start saying, let's sign off this to Isaac. Let's sign off this. Because, you know, don't, don't, you, you know, some, some people say that uh, there's nobody, and I've seen my, I've heard my wife mention it, that there's nobody we can't do without. <laughs> One day I called her, we were sleeping together. I said, mommy, I know there's nobody we cannot do without too, but there are some people <laughs> we cannot do without. And I said, I will not be able to sleep for how those people become valuable in something that's important to me. I said, they, I, I know there's nobody or nobody's indispensable, but there are some people that in my mind, I pray that they stay. You cannot argue against book. You cannot argue against learning. You cannot argue against growth. And the sooner you just submit to it, right? The faster your life moves uh, a bit forward. So I said the most difficult part of learning is becoming. What do I mean? And I'll give us a quick example. I know Dr. Tumsia drives. Dr. Tumsia, you drive, right? I know... Uh, Uncle Jerry, right? Yes, I do. Yes, uh, yes, yes. You took us to that night in Lagos. <laughs> I remember. I know gorgeous drives. Uh, uh, of course, since Madame Ijoma has a car, I know she drives. Uh, so immediately after service, 
immediately after service, that was when I got uh, my first, uh, my, is it after service? I can't remember. I go one car like that. And it was manual. I burnt the clutch of that car two times. And when I want to go out in the night, the fear in my heart is that will I be able to go and come back? Like, do I know the road? You know how you're driving consciously. Then one day I decided to park the car, I used another vehicle. And I saw people's lights flashing the driver because I was sitting down in front. And I was like, if I were to be in shoes, I would not be able to see anywhere. It means that I will enter inside the ditch. The fear of that scenario stopped me for a while from driving in the night. The day I took the car out in the night, like the road was straight. I was still doing like this and I was still shaking. I got back home yesterday. I can't remember, but late in the night. I was holding meeting. I was answering conversation. I was texting. Sometimes I even forget that I'm driving, but I don't miss my way. Can you imagine? I've become a driver. You can learn to be nice. When you become nice, it comes out naturally. It oozes out naturally. You can learn leadership. But when you become a leader, it comes out naturally. So the goal is to keep learning until your subconscious becomes one with the thought. When your subconscious become one with the thought, you are done. You are done. If you give me one million dollars now, you don't need to guess what I will do with it. I will not be confused about whether to go and buy. I went to see my wife at a working place. And then she said I should come into their showroom. And she took me into their showroom. I saw a car of 100 million. I saw some of 200, 300 million. You cannot confuse me to buy that kind of car now, even if I have the cash. Because I've taken time to become mission driven. Let me stop so that I don't take over from Isaac. Right. So the goal of this growth is that we become, not we become what we know, hmm? but become what we are learning. Because what we already know is directing our actions. But what we are learning can redirect our action. So put first thing first. Now I want us to do something. What's the first quadrant? What's the label of the first quadrant? Can we type? What's the label of the first quadrant? Let's type. What's the label of the first quadrant? Can we remember there were four quadrants? Um, the label urgent, the urgent, I think urgent and important, right? So let's yeah, let's sorry. type it. First quadrant. Urgent, not urgent, not important. Relax. Not Can important, you type it first? Important. Type first. No, so it has to be two things. Mm -mm. Well, no, so it's, it's, it's urgent, urgent, it, urgent. It's urgent and important. That was the first quadrant. So let's start. What's the first quadrant? Let's type it. Let's can somebody type it. Urgent and important. Fantastic. Urgent and important. Fantastic. That's the first. Fantastic. 
Fantastic. Fantastic. You know, sometimes when I'm doing this thing, I'm very happy. Because, and I don't know why I'm very happy. You know, those are the things I stumbled on some few years ago that just changed. I, I told some people I hugged. I hugged on the street of a market. I hugged pure water. No, not pure water, sachet water. Those ones you sell one one naira. Those were the things that changed me. Some of this thought that is making me happy. And I'm happy because if we all learn this, our lives will not be the same. Our lives will not be the same. Urgent and important. Fantastic. Now, let's check. Let me bring back the, the, the presentation, if you guys don't mind. What are the things in the first quadrant? I'm coming. Crisis, pressing problems, deadline driven project. Exactly. Crisis, pressing problem, deadline driven project. Blessing, my former partner, taught me something and I will never forget. He said, if everything you do every day is solving problem, he said, it's very difficult to move forward. And he gave the reason. He said, if, so this is a bottle of water. I asked them to get it for me. If the, No, no, let me not use this bottle of water. Let me use this for, I have an iPhone that I hardly use. So this iPhone, this is how it is. If this iPhone has a problem, will I spend money to repair it? Can somebody answer me? Will I spend money no. to repair it? No. no. No, I will spend money now. Who will give me? What will I spend? He has to spend money now. I have to spend money now. Because you spend. hardly use it. Okay, no, no, no. Don't philosophize. Let's just think straight. Well, yeah, this one I, I use. Hey, don't philosophize. <laughs> straight up. This one I use. If this Samsung gets bad, hmm, the skin, uh, screen got broken, will I spend money to repair it? Sharp, sharp. All right, good. Will it affect my work? Yes, it will. Of course, will be put on hold. All right, good. Yes, I remember when the WhatsApp blocked uh, me. That's why I had to use my second number. I asked them to add it. Now, will I spend time in ensuring that this is fixed? Yeah. Huh? Will you spend time? Spend time, yes. Will it take a few of my time? Yes, it will. Yes. So look at it this way. I had this thing normal. Then it got broken. I had spent money. I have halted operations. I have wasted time. But the best this thing can be is to come back to normal. Will it become, because I spent time, spent money, halted operation, will it become better than what it was before? <laughs> will it become better than what it was before? No, it will just come back to its normal self. If your life is spending time, money on problem, you will be the biggest loser. You know, Blessing taught me this lesson. Because, you know, we were colleagues. We were in the same boat. And he saw that I was always concerned about my problems. Hey! If you bring too many problems to me, there's a way my brain does. I keep it aside and focus on growth. You know, more I said, we are not, we are wasting money. I said, don't worry. Let me focus on making more money that people than people can waste. <laughs> so that if I make more money and they are wasting it, but the more money becomes bigger. Because you could get bitter because you lost. Uh, I went to the, uh, to some, I did a transaction and 10,000 was hanging. Up to today, I didn't go back to pick it up. So I cannot go at this level to go out to the bank to go and queue for 10,000 naira. Hmm? 
So my goal now is to quickly grow and be that person that will not go and queue for 1 million, maybe not for 10 million. So urgent and important are pressing problems. Did you see that Isaac, which quadrant was Isaac focusing on at the end of the day? Which quadrant is important? Which quadrant was important? Two. two. Quadrant two. What's quadrant Prevention. two? What's quadrant two? Important, What's quadrant two? not urgent. <laughs> not urgent, but important. <laughs> Can we type it? Can we type it? Can we all type it? Quadrant two. Quadrant two. <laughs> yeah. uh, I hope somebody is listening. This someone that I'm preaching at. Eh? This someone changed me. Not urgent, but important. Fantastic. This thing that we are doing, is it very urgent? If we don't do this, we will wake up tomorrow morning. If we yes, don't do this, we will wake up tomorrow morning. We can shift this thing to next year. Sure, you know, we can shift this growth lesson to next year, right? It, it will, no, nothing will happen because this activity that we are doing is not urgent, but is it important? See again, let me bring up Isaac's lesson. Let me bring up Isaac's lesson. And I like that lesson, Uncle Isaac. Like that less. The most thing they were complaining about Isaac is that he could not withstand a lot of pressure. In fact, I was in wholesale and they were all laughing at it. Who can remember that meeting that day? We were, they were all laughing. Everybody had I their own experience to share. Huh? You were there, right? I know probably God just is there, Dr. Nancy. I don't know whether Ijoma was there. I know Blessing uh, uh, account was there. I know Uncle Jerry too was there. Abby, am I correct? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Fantastic. And you know why he was breaking down under pressure? There is no fire installed in his brain on how to handle it. If you give me, if all of you credit me for 500,000 for this thing I've just said there, eh, I will collect it. Let me tell you why you're always breaking down, why you're always shouting at people, why you're always trying to get people to follow you and they're not following you or listening to you and they're not listening to you. There's no fire installed in your memory to handle that situation. So see what he did. He said he now, and I, I, I've recorded this on Isaac. I will pick it out and I might share it to the end, just that story. And I hope the people will understand. He said three people were calling him at the same time. Something, you know, there was a time when he was responding to those pressure. He was like, hey, that is going to break down. And don't forget, there's also family pressure. There's pressure from wife. There's pressure from mother. There's pressure from mother. There's pressure in the workplace. There's your own personal pressure. They're all pressures. All of a sudden, he said he remembered what he learned, putting first thing first. Did you resolve it in 15 minutes? You might not have changed physically but you have grown. I want to submit to everybody in this team. Eh? You don't know the level of mediocrity you carry until you start learning. You know, I, I see, I, sometimes I, watch, I see people, they become very full, like they know everything. You, you don't know until you start learning. And that's why Learning comes with a measure of humility that everybody must possess. 
that everybody must possess. So he picked that file, and that file, he remembered, and everything was done in 15 minutes. There was another brilliant thing he said. He said, he's been given CTO. Now, your position can drive you to be your guy, or your position can drive the hunger in you to want to meet up. You know, leave Farmer. Uh, farmer lad is not where it needs to be. I can, I, I can bet all of you. It's not where. We've not got into, I'm not sure if we're 10% of what Famalat is built to become. We are not yet there. We are not. We are not yet there. So, you know, sometimes when people call me CEO, sometimes I get shy. In my mind, eh, I'm not very conscious of that CEO. You know what I'm conscious of? At the end of the month, there will be salary. At the end of the month, I will have to measure, are we where we were? Last month, December, we did the highest, 144 million since, since inception. 144 million in one month. Uh, uh, wholesale, I think wholesale, we do the highest since we started this month, right? At the end of the month, yes. I have yes. a question to ask myself. Were we better than we were last month? I didn't see you. In fact, you can take it. I dash you. It's one joke that says, you know the name, I own the car. <clears throat> I can dash you the title. <clears throat> like, I can dash you the title. What I want at the end of the day, when I, like, we need to move quickly to 200 million per month. This year, we need to move to 500 million per month. I want to close this year huh? with the fact that we did 800 million in one month. If that will make me move my title and focus on work, I don't mind. I don't mind. All right, so let's talk. And you know, I beg for 30 minutes and I will not beg for another 30 minutes next week. I will just keep to this. Huh? I want us to just share, collaborate experience, maybe not say something, not urgent, but important is what we should focus on. In fact, if we can master this quadrant, what's in this quadrant, first of all, let me be sure that we all get what's in this quadrant. Not urgent, but important. What's in the quadrant? Prevention, PC activities, um, relationship building, exactly. recognizing new opportunities, exactly. planning and recreation. Exactly. You know what, when he brought up this slide, what struck me was building relationship. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> is when trouble comes, some people will know that. So I think there was a joke that the, the numbers you have in your phone, uh, there's a way they put it. Is it that their phone number, they are not contact. I can't remember Can the joke. So if that's the most important and you're doing that before you even get to that crisis, you might never have that crisis. You might never. Why did I start taking multivitamins? I started taking multivitamins because of Steve Jobs. I noticed I was having white hair. My gym now, if I leave it, it's white hair now. <laughs> that will come out. All right, so let me get all of us to talk. So somebody wants to say something quickly, just to strengthen what it is that we are learning. So are you sure we'll still talk like this after this powerful message? No, 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 just no. Just no, to no, share no, the no, Sometimes you just share experience or maybe you just reiterate what you've learned. There's a lot of power in saying something again. There's a lot of power in it. Uh, so. And you know, okay, it's so a I'll go thing. first. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'll Thanks. go first. 
So, um, Mr. Isaac, thank you so much for this powerful presentation. You turned doctor into one strong doctor became a motivational speaker. You know, I love the department where doctor, you know, the energy was everywhere, the expression. You know, you could tell that this is somebody that has tried this, it has worked, and you know, he's very confident that this is just the way. And I'm glad that it's evident that whatever he's doing is clearly working. Famalat is a living proof you know, of all the principles doctor is trying to imbibe in all of us. So thank you so much, Mr. Isaac, once again. So my take from this entire point is even while I was reading the book was the time management matrix, which was able to clearly compartmentalize our activities because I think that is where we all get it wrong. We try to make everything, but if you're able to um, compartmentalize your activities into these four quadrants, then I think um, it will go a long way solving your problem. And you asked the question that if there is one thing that we think we can, that if we're doing right now, we will make a whole difference in our lives. For me, I think it's more reading and research because each time I dedicate myself to read and research is either my month becomes better, my mm -hmm. week becomes great. But when I shut down on reading and research, I become a terrible, terrible person. Um, so for me, I think reading and research is one thing that if I am to concentrate and focus fully on, um, you know, it's just going to be child's play either way. So um, that's the answer for, I think that, that it was just one question, right? Mm -hmm. No, no, two questions, but I think the second one is also similar. Uh, okay, so for what... me, it's research and reading and my take home entirely, the, my um, point of, um, um, I don't know what to say, is the time management matrix. And I'm seriously going to focus on um, you know, implementing this going forward. So thank you so much, Mr. Isaac, and your presentation was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I'm tempted to talk, but let me leave so that everybody can talk. But let me just, 30 seconds. What happens when you're growing is that what used to be a challenge before, you just discovered that they were no longer challenged again. I can't mm. remember the last time I fought really like very hard my wife. She was just reminding me that I've never laid a finger on her since we got married 10 years. When you grow, eh, what became difficult yesterday will become so easy. In fact, you will do them subconsciously. You will not know. Some people get into a place, it's easy to follow them as a leader. Some people have to work double hard. Leave those people that you are that are not following you. Just work on yourself. Once you work on yourself, you become that magnet that everybody wants to follow. As people still, you know, I met somebody who told me no like three years ago. I know she came to meet me in the meeting and the it was warm. Three years ago, she didn't want to follow me. Those other people are distractions. Don't, in fact, don't shout at them. In fact, don't get angry at them. It's you. Ah, it's you, you. Once you gets better, every other thing gets better. All right, so let's take the next stop. Go ahead. And anybody can talk, but because all of us will talk, so you better talk now because our, everybody will talk. So I've talked in the beginning, no. No, talk again. Talk, talk. <laughs> and and so, so all right. Okay, go ahead, madam. Um, uh, I didn't uh, like. I wasn't expecting the delivery that uh, I got from Mr. Isaac this evening. Like it was flowing, and then. Um, I'll focus on the quadrants too, not urgent, but important. So I'll just summarize and say that's proactivity, being proactive. If you have, um, if you foresee problems, which require thinking, you foresee a, something that might be a problem in the future, they're not urgent, but are very important. And then you've been able to attain and attack them before it becomes a problem. That, that helps. When you, get, when, when you get to that point, it becomes like you doesn't see a problem again. You might not even know that, actually, like you mentioned, sir, 
that you do things subconsciously because it's it's part of your fire that you have in your head already. So like the first lesson say proactivity. So I can say being proactive means attending to things that are not urgent but are very important. This helps in planning ahead and it helps in planning our day. So for me, my take home here is like, it all embodies being proactive. We have the, um, having the hand in mind and all, but then I will say not urgent, but important. Like you have tasks that are lying ahead. We've been able to attend in terms of importance, urgency. They might not, but then if you're able to think and then you're able to plan ahead, this helps in um, attending to other things. And I would say um, the thing I would like to do that I've not been doing, that I would like to make part of my daily routine is actually reading, learning from everything I see. Like every case becomes, uh, every scenario becomes something that I, that I learned from. So I would say reading. At times, I, I get too overwhelmed that you... You, you don't create time to learn or improve. But uh, I think I'll, I'll make learning, reading, improving something I do on a daily basis. Like I will have a schedule at the time of the day where I read, where I improve, and then I plan ahead. So I'll say thank you to Mr. Isaac for the wonderful delivery. And thank you to sir for shedding more light on the lesson. All right. <laughs> Can I talk, sir? Okay, go ahead, uh, Uncle Jerry. Fire, as, my, fire. as my report line just spoke, the ginger just came, so I need to All support right. that. <laughs> so mine was the quadrant three. That's the interruption. That's interruptions, calls, mails, reports, meetings, when you are trying to be focused, trying to maybe achieve something. All of a sudden, a call will just come, and, and it's common with farm alerts. In fact, I've learned something from doctor and I started doing it. I don't reply to every chat now. Because I, <laughs> I don't want to get distracted. <laughs> and sir, I might start even using it on you. <laughs> there might be some activities, you know. The way Farmer Lat is built, they want you to always do this now. Do this now. So there might be activities I might just say, sir, I don't know if I will remind you, take you back to the seven habits. Sir, calls, I, may, I might not reply to some calls, not that I'm being rude, or because I'm trying to be focused to get the bigger goal. I learned it from you. Sometimes you just, you can send doctor like thousands of messages. He will just pick one out of all you said and reply to that one. Or he will just say, okay. So at some point I thought, ah, is it that? But after going through this book, I started reading it and started understanding that ah, it's true. It means that all these things can actually distract you. And thank you, Mr. Isaac, for bringing this out. It's to me personally, this is one thing I, I've, I've learned and I feel I want to work with. I don't want to be distracted because I'm easily, I'm like, I sometimes I, like, I feel like I'm teleprompter. Once you say this, it's done. You say this. But if I keep up like that, my family will just miss me. <laughs> so I told myself that Jerry, do the one you can do. No problem can kill you. Today, if they call me wholesale, this one as well. I said, don't worry, it will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it can't kill me. <laughs> I would rather kill it than it kill me. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, Uncle Jerry. So learn it, but don't use it on me. Eh? You can use it on <laughs> all others. You know, I remember those days when we started wholesale and wholesale was having problems. And you know, one of the key things I said is that we will be fine. Uh, we'll be fine. Sometimes when problems come, they want you to react to it. And you will even look like if you don't react to it in the immediate, you will lose your life. Ina. Ina. You will not die. That family member that is calling you 1 a.m., they will not die. They will not die. And you know, the more you become successful, the more calls come in, the more message comes in, 
the more demand on your time, on your money. <laughs> but you have to focus on that one thing while the course, the messages are in prison. It's just wisdom. If you, it's just like you're playing table tennis and the scoreboard is there. And instead of playing the table tennis where you're looking at the scoreboard, oh, I'm going up. Oh, I'm going up. <laughs> you will start watching yourself going down. Right in your eyes, you start going down. So one of the key things I just learned, just first thing first, what? why are they calling you? If it's this thing that you're working, that must take priority. All right, so let's get, let me start calling names now. Ijoma, say something. Good evening, everybody. Evening. Okay, we've been talking about quadrant two, two. So the only thing I can contribute also is I go along with quadrant two because that's the most important for us to focus and prioritize whatever we have, like our daily plans, focus, determination, and whatever we want to do. All right, uh, Madam Lujuma, gorgeous. Okay, so I'm going to, um, good day, everyone. I'm going to focus on the um, quadrant that is travel. That's, um, what, it, what, it, what does it say? Tri trivia, busy work. So to me, it's like not urgent and not important. Okay, so I, I want to classify them as um, distractions. And, and all distractions should be avoided at all costs. However, in doing that, just don't mislabel it. Don't mislabel it. Okay, now, I mean, sometimes some people um, have requests that are important and need maybe like urgent attention. But then when you when you focus on that person's request, it takes a whole lot of time and it's eating into your own activities of activities that you've lined up as urgent and important. So in that case, you'd have to learn to be very assertive, um, assertive in your response to that regards. So I want to throw back to what my dad used to say. He says things like, who are you is not a bad question, it's how he's asked. So I can just come to a place and say, who are you? That sounds really offensive. But then again, someone comes to, to tell the same person that found it offensive. The person says, who are you? You know, so being assertive, especially when you want to throw a no. I think he mentioned something about saying no when things are not urgent and important to you and are requested from someone else. So you should know how to handle it properly. So when you say no, don't just say no. It comes off as rude. But then you say no, and then you explain honestly why it can't be done at that time. And then when you give that explanation, and it's something that can be delegated, just as Mr. Isaac mentioned, you can delegate it to someone else. So that way, you're not doing it, hmm? but you've, you've, you've been able to manage the, the situation properly. So you can say no, and then briefly explain to clarify your reasons without making any form of excuses. That's another point. You know, this, this... okay, go ahead. Sorry? Okay. Yeah. I... This is saying no. While you're talking about it, eh, I still also discovered that it's something I'm trying to master. I guaranteed someone a loan of 20 million the interest rose to 30 million and I'm the one paying back now. And then just yesterday afternoon, another person came up with a request that he wants a loan from a bank and they are asking him for a guarantor. <laughs> and because the person is close to me, I said, okay, no, why not? When I now drop the call, and I remember that I'm still paying 30 million. Don't allow other people ruin your own life. 
innocently. Okay, should I continue? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, and then sometimes when you say no, you can also give alternatives as to how to handle that um, situation. For example, I asked you for something and you'd be like, oh no, I don't have time today, but I could reschedule it for tomorrow. Do you get so at this time of the day, you can't, you're not, you can't avail yourself. So there's no need saying, oh, you have to do it because no. Because you, you already have a lined up activity. And again, it's a good thing that we have a a, a journal that was shared on me. I, I, I call my own journal my productivity journal. So that way you have things listed according to importance or I'm still trying to, for me, I'm still trying to organize it based on importance because I just write it down regardless, as long as that's what I want to do. So what I've learned is from what Mr. Isaac was saying, I'll just, instead of writing everything I have to do um, in a day haphazardly, I'll classify it based on, on importance. So I think that's, that's my own take on it. So as much as you say no, you also have to, empathetically repeat mm, with explanations or alternatives to, you know, if, you know, that's all I have to say. And, and, and that's a very strong lesson, very strong lesson. That even me too, I'm just still learning. Well, you know, sometimes when you hear these things, it's not to hear to reply, it's to also ask yourself, is that what I do? So, while you were talking, I just asked myself, how thoughtful have I been in telling people no and offering alternatives? Yes, let's take, uh, no, before Uncle Jerry, blessing uh, account. Now mine is a question around this, this no. Okay, all right, go ahead. <laughs> but we have seven now, a situation where you say the no, right? And the person you are saying the no still does not believe you. And at the end, the person ends up feeling offended. What do you do? Don't worry about people's offense. I don't these days I don't worry. Like it's right, my sir. wife that we turn face and it will disturb me. All right, sir. It's good to say no then. Turn face. Stop. I've done my best. As long as my conscience, sometimes I, and I could be very wrong. I apologize. And I feel, I genuinely feel bad. But I can't keep punishing myself for it. Don't worry. Just ensure that uh, you, you're not on the wrong side. And if you're on the wrong side, ensure you apologize. But other than that, you cannot be responsible for another person's feeling. There was a, Thank you, sir. There was a time everybody thought I was a team. Don't worry about it. Okay, so blessing account. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Okay, so I picked a few points from what he said. So he said, um, so I learned that um, we should put ourselves first. Fine, we understand first things first. Before somebody is interrupting whatever they are doing, you were there. If you are not there, that person won't come to meet you in the first place. So which helps us to um, organize our life. And then um, I do that a lot. Even for me, that most of the time I wake up in the midnight and then I already have a list of the things I want to do. If um, I want Mrs. Ijo to do something or I want Annabelle to do something or the, I, a list of things I want them to do. So midnight, Mrs. Ijo can testify to me. I have sent her a list of things I would like her to do during the day. I sent it to her at midnight because that was the time I woke up and I made that list. So that has already been part of my life. I have a, an app that I write the list, I put the time and I set an alarm. So that reminds me and helps me a lot. So I already have that. 
But then during the course of work um, at work, um, you, you see that people come and interrupt whatever you are doing. And that's where this four quadrants comes. Is it urgent and important? Is it not urgent? So that is where we, we can, and then he said that we should learn to say no. I learned to say no. And then um, sometimes you feel like, okay, let me just help you. But then you put yourself first because whatever it is you are doing, you have to um, deliver on whatever it is that you are given to do. And then even the people that are coming to me too that, okay, help me with this thing. They are also trying to deliver on the things that they are supposed to do. So it should not interrupt what you are doing. And then he said, um, we should schedule our priorities and not prioritizing our schedule. And then he spoke about um, the things we want to do. They should be flexible. They should be portable. We should be able to take, like I have different daughters. I write different things. And then um, most of the ones that are really important, I take them everywhere I go up. I'm going to church, I'm going out. I have those daughters with me. And then it's like, he's reminding me of the things I, I've been doing and to do more about it. Thank you. That's very good. <clears throat> very good. I have a few thoughts, but I'll keep that because of our time. So let's take Dr. Nancy, finally. Yes, good evening, everyone. So, please let somebody else in. Okay, so good evening, everyone. So for me, um, I'll just say it's simple. Organize and execute around um, priorities. Like that's basically that. Once you prioritize, follow it through, execute with what is the most important, and then you take it through to what um, you may see as not so important and not urgent per se, but then it has to be from the most important. Not It doesn't have to be urgent for you to do it. As long as it's important, do it. That is that. All right, so I, I think that's a perfect way to wrap it up. Uh, <clears throat> make learning and becoming a priority. It's not urgent, but it is important simple but powerful and i think uh, uh it's been a nice learning time on, on on a final note so i recognize that we are all growing i am also and i also give space for that growth we can progress faster when we drop ego and protect each other. So, so let me ask us a question. Do all of you think I'm a saint? Maybe not. My wife knows me better than almost all of you. But one of the key things she does, she has made it her role to protect me. So we are both young, but we are together. The uniqueness in Pamela is protecting each other. And sometimes protecting each other might also mean you leaving out your rights.
So it takes maturity to lose your rights and focus on your roles and responsibility. It takes a lot of maturity to leave your, whether I'm right or wrong, and just execute your role with love and execute your responsibility. No, I, I know the doctor says a Muslim, but let me quote a scripture. He said, so how many times your brother offend you before you hammer around? He said, 17 times seven. I want us in all conversations, in all activity, to protect each other in family. So just imagine that I may see you and they ask me, all right, so hi, uh, Dr. Kai. Hi, Dr. Nancy. Ah, no, 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 no. You'll be disappointed if you work with Dr. Nancy. Just imagine me saying that. Wouldn't I become a stupid CEO? <laughs> Wouldn't I become a stupid CEO? <laughs> We can quarrel among ourselves, which is a very nice thing. But when we are talking to others about another person, we should say it with kindness, respect, and the fact that we are working together. We cannot tear each other apart. I will show him, I will show her, when you start saying that, it shows the level you are in the leadership cadre. I do that too. When I become conscious that I, I'm saying I will show this person, I will show this person. When I'm alone, I will now sit down again and say, ah, show this person. For why now? For waiting. I've always kept it that just grow beyond pain grow beyond when people don't believe in you. Just grow beyond it. Let's protect each other. Have a, and all thanks to uh, Uncle Isaac for this evening's class. We enjoyed ourselves. Who is taking the next class? Who's taking the next class? In our timetable. It's it's me. Okay, all right, Dr. Nancy. I think uh, the next habit is think win-win. Maybe by that, we will also be able to expatiate on what I'm ending with. Having said that, Bob, wish you a happy evening. Thank you, and have a wonderful evening, everyone. Thank you for this great Thursday, and then I'll see you next week, Thursday. Oh, we don't want to go in. We are finished.